What's up guys and welcome to Void of Just Gaming, your channel for fresh Arena of Valor content. Today I have Arduin on the solo lane for you as I wanted to try him out in the new meta and we are going with a full tank, full tank enchantment build and it's gonna be legendary zero deaths in total. If you haven't subscribed to Bot of Dust Gaming, subscribe to the channel and help me to reach the 1000 subscribers. And if you like the video, a thumbs up is highly appreciated. Enjoy the gameplay. So as I said in the intro, we are going with a full tank build, this time featuring the Aegis as we wanted to take all the cool stuff that the Aegis brings to the battlefield. I'm going to use the Medallion of Troy as my magic defense and afterwards we are just going to focus on items that give us more health and more armor. In this case Mantle of Ra deals a little bit more damage from the passive, we've got the Frost Cape for additional damage and we have the Mail of Pain reflecting incoming damage against us. Arcana wise we are going with full damage, normal attacks are increased by 45, armor pierce is increased by 100 and we do get some movement speed increased by 10%. That comes from 10 times onslaught, 10 times assassinate and 10 times skewer, pretty standard. Uh, nothing to worry about and in the enchantment tree as I said we're going with full tank full sustain so we are focusing on Afata with the towers blessing that gives us more resistance every single time we are next to a tower doesn't matter if it's our tower or the enemies we are going with regrowth as this improves our shield effects your two is the main skill that you guys are going to focus on you're going to max that first, and we are having the explosive shield for additional shielding. Um, Lockheim wise, we are going with Devourer, that gives us some restoration. And we are going to use the Bone Cutter to increase our resistance against crowd control effects even further. That stacks up nicely with the Gilded Greaves. So that's the build, and here comes the gameplay. So, as you guys are going to see, we are up against Zata on the solo lane, so we are having a range-based attacker against us, which means that we need to play a little bit more defensively, and the result of that will be that I'm going to maintain my position on the tower. Um, that is the strategy that I have chosen for this match as usually I'm a little bit um, more aggressive meaning that I would probably lose against Zata because he has a lot of control effects and a lot of damage that he can throw against us look at that like we are under tower and he already managed to snack away two boxes of health so we need to be a, a bit careful about this so we do get a flicker here and uh, we do get a little bit of damage onto him and after we cleared a little bit of the wave I am going back under the tower immediately. Look at that, like he's doing consistent damage so I'm going to use my shield as some sort of protection. Well I'm not really executing what I said at the beginning of the video that much in terms of tower hugging but more than usually. So usually I would go with the Heart of the Incubus at first and then I would focus on upgrading my boots from the normal boots to the first tier immediately but this time I went with the boots first because it gives us mobility on the one hand and we do get some magic resistance on the other hand so I found it more helpful to upgrade them first before I'm going with my first item. As I don't know if Batman is going to show up, um, I'm now focusing on the first item, the Mantle of Ra and I did that because um, I could use the Medallion of Troy instead, but as I said, like Batman is attack damage based, so I wanted to have the mixture between armor against normal attacks and the Greaves against magic damage 
Um, yeah, that was the idea behind that. I'm checking the map all the time to see if Zata makes his way up to the top lane again. But as he has been fighting on the bottom lane, so really far away from his tower, I took the chance to put some damage into his tower. You guys are always you guys always want to deal damage to the tower if that's possible. Um, I misclicked my ult here. I wanted to go towards Zata instead of wasting it on a minion, but as I clicked too fast, it used the auto lock instead of drawing the effect towards the point of origin where I wanted it to. Now I need to be super careful, as you can see, I do only have two health boxes left. I know that he has wasted his ult, but I think his ult has a pretty um, short cooldown, therefore I had to be a little bit careful. So, and he's going all in here, but with some luck we are able to get him coming from the control effect so i waited a little bit to activate my first ability again and it showed the deserved effect we got the first kill on zata and that's going to put him a little bit behind my team is doing a good job on uh, occupying the enemies 6-2 here at the moment and I'm already level 6 so this is going quite well I do have a lot of time farming Zata goes in with all his stuff again but he was a little bit too close to the tower so one tower shot was getting him and that's good like all the damage that I can put into that enemy hero is pretty welcome because it just gives me an easier time fighting him if he overexposes a little bit too much which he did in the past quite a lot like he really went in for the kill and now I need to be careful again but he misses his shot here which is good so again it's back to tower Back to tower and we don't want we don't want the cannon minion to attack our tower that's the main source of damage that a team has if it wants to destroy the tower so I need to be careful that this minion in particular does not get the tower look at that like now it focused the tower but I was able to defeat it quite fast going with medallion of Troy now as my Second real item, we have managed to kill the Abyssal Dragon, which is actually quite nice. And now Zata is overexposing again. And two tower shots deal sufficient damage on him so that he is going back using Flicker again. So this is like the second Flicker that I'm able to pull just because he was a little bit too far ahead. Might just be that he did not play Zata that much in the past and therefore he doesn't really know the range that all of his stuff has leading to an overexposure. Again, as I saw that Zata is going uh, down, I'm able to roam into the middle lane, defending the tower from the cannon minions. Um, now L'Oreal is fighting against Raz who has come back from the base. He's able to defeat her quite easily. Um, look at that, he still has all his health. You can check that with the little icon below the map. There you know how much health your team has. And that means we're doing a really good job. 12 kills, 6 deaths. So game is going in our favor but that does not mean anything. The game can change with one big team fight from one second to the other and completely change the flow of the game. It happened a lot to me in the past. So you need to focus and concentrate throughout the entire game. 
medallion of Troy is close to being finished. Uh, we've got some Batman action here. Batman wants to fight me, but I don't really care. Now Roz helps me out, and here comes the shutdown. Not that well played from Batman, I guess. Um, I don't know if he wasn't aware of the fact that Roz was going to help me out, so I baited him a little bit into fighting me, and we just killed him with ease. And that was easy as well. I think some of the L'Oreal's just overestimate a little bit how fast they can travel and what distance they can make or get or do or whatever. Um, in this case, it was actually quite easy to get her while she was standing next to the wall. So this is another Abyssal Craters. Um, I'm going for some Elando snacks here, landing my ability once, landing my ability twice, and now another kill for my team, this time Valheim, and that's always a good kill. You want your AD carry to be fed, and from the flow of the game, we know that Crashed has um, executed some of the enemies, so Valheim did not get these kills, so he can use some. We're going in here. Uh, they made it out alive and now I need to go back to safety still in the leading position of the game did quite a good job on pushing the lane into the second tower on the top lane so that actually worked quite well but on the other hand, one has to admit that Zata wasn't paying that much attention and playtime on the top lane, so I had an easy game so far pushing stuff towards the towers. And now I'm going back to get back with get back to the battlefield with full life. Second place at the moment gold wise, so we're doing good. For solo laner, we're doing pretty well at the moment. Our Aegis is about to be finished soon. And then we can go on and get some nice Frost Cape. Mana isn't that important. We're not building the Aegis for the mana aspect. Um, but for the passives in terms of slower attack speed and all the stuff that the Aegis offers. So pushing that lane again. Now I do want some vision, but clearing speed from Arduin is in fact not that great. That said, it's not awful, but it's not that as good as some of the more warrior focused uh, heroes such as Richter for example, or if you take Florentino. Florentino is just mowing down lanes quite easily. And now we are up and going in against the very inner tower of the enemy. Need to be careful here because the enemy might just come back. There, there here they are. So I am seeing an Elando on the map and I want him. So now this is something that everyone likes if you are Arduin. I've got the shield up. Uh, Zata misplays here, he uses one of his abilities that he should not have used, so this is the triple kill for us. Arduin is a beast, like if you are fed and if you farmed well, you can take on three enemies with just the help of one of your teammates. Sometimes you can even solo three heroes at the same time, but I would not advise you to do so. Um, it could go well, but it would rather go wrong if you are putting too much pressure on it. It's super tanky and your shield does a lot combined with the crowd control effects, but I would not stress my luck any further than two enemies at the same time. 
And here we go. And again, that's like an awful match for the enemies. Elando is jumping around, but it's not really helping him at all. And we've got the lane pushed. Got a full lane going into their tower, and here we are. First tower, first inner tower next to Annexus has been destroyed, and we do have minions. So we could arguably start to deal damage to the enemies. We aced them. But the other waves are not pushed that well, and we don't have that much health in the team left. So we need to be careful here. Um, Batman is around. So I was just turning around to indicate that I'm willing to fight him. And here we go. Good setup on, from my team. And we are killing them. <sighs> Another double kill. Eight kills in total. Eight, zero, six. That's crazy. I, I don't think that I have many games with Arduin which have resulted in zero deaths in total. Don't think that this is think that happened for the first time to be honest I don't think that I done that quite well well that move was not that clever but the enemy team is completely shut down Batman is coming back in nine seconds and this is game Ta -da! so ladies and gentlemen we finished the game in under 15 minutes good result and thank you Tencent for making me the MVP, 10k gold. Ten K gold and that's the result. Here's the build, you've seen that in the intro, and here comes the stats. So yeah guys, thanks for watching. Bye bye!